Attention! McCarthy Math Academy proudly presents the Math FSA Boot Camp Series. Hello everyone, I'm Miss McCarthy and I am so excited that you are here. are more than a test score. We don't want you stressing out about this test. We just want you to activate your greatness within. And you might be saying, But Miss McCarthy, listen, I know that math is your jam, but math and I, yeah, we're not really the best of friends. You may have struggled in the past, and you know what? Good. Struggle is necessary because struggle makes us stronger. If we go over something in these videos that you're like, hmm, that skill didn't quite click yet, I'm gonna send you to more videos to help you practice. Your teachers and I, we can expose you to all kinds of tools and strategies, but you have to choose to use them. You have to choose to own them. Imagine opening up that test and feeling so excited to throw down your best. This can be your reality. So now is the time that you need to activate the person you were born to be and let's do this. Are you ready to throw 100% focus, hustle, and heart into this right now? That's what I'm talking about, yes! Okay, let's go ahead and jump on into today's episode of the Math FSA Bootcamp Series. And <laughs> I almost forgot to say, uh, let me teach ya. What is happening, fifth graders? Welcome to video number five of the McCarthy Math FSA Bootcamp series. I hope that you have your worksheet because at this time, I would like you to pause the video and go ahead and try out number one and number two on your own. Don't forget to show your journey, show your thinking on paper. It helps you to slow down and really think about each step that you're doing. If you're like, Ms. McCarthy, I don't have the worksheet. Don't worry, somewhere around this video is a link that you can click to access the worksheets that go along with this math FSA boot camp series. So check that out. Now is the time. Go ahead and pause the video, fifth graders. Throw down your best. Press play when you're ready to check your work. Welcome back. Let's see how you did, okay? All right, number one, first of all, let's talk about the question type upon first glance that we're seeing right here. I'm seeing a question with four answer choices. So what kind of question do you think this is? Yeah, it's gonna be a multiple choice question. So write that in there, multiple choice. Boom, okay. Which statement is equivalent to multiplying a number by 10 to the fifth power? Let me mark up my text here to slow it down. So which statement, where are the statements? <laughs> right down there, which one of those is equivalent. What does equivalent mean? Equal, right? So which statement, which one of these sentences is equivalent to multiplying a number by 10 to the fifth power? So that's 10 to the power of five. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and break this question down, but I am at the end of this, if you're like, wait, what was she talking about? I am gonna send you to some videos in the McCarthy Math 155 series that will help to really break down what I'm doing here. When I'm going through these problems, I'm assuming that you've been taught how to do this. If you're like I was in the past, you might have some learning gaps and you might need some more practice. So that's why I give you guys those practice videos. All right, enough rambling, let's go. So if we have 10 to the power of five, that means that we're taking the number 10 and we're multiplying it by 10 how many times? Five times, right? So that would be 10, say it with me, times 10, there's two, times 10, there's three, times 10, there's four, times 10. This right here is called your base and this little guy right there is called your what? It's your exponent or your power, your exponent. Five times we're multiplying by 10 because our exponent is five. Also, this would be with, to write this number out, it would be with 10 as a base, write a number one, 
then write as many zeros as your exponent. So five zeros would be one, two, three, four, five. Ones, tens, hundreds, comma. All right, so let's go ahead and look to see which answer choice matches up with our work that we just did over here with 10 to the power of five. We have A, adding 10 five times. Well, we did do something with 10 five times, but it was not adding, adding. Having adding right there makes it wrong, so let's eliminate it. Also make sure when you're eliminating, you're not eliminating on the answer choice because a computer is going to scan your test and if they see an X on one of the letters, it's gonna think that you made that you meant to mark that answer. And we don't want that one, that's why we put it over here. Adding five, 10 times. Well, we did not add, that's wrong, eliminate C. Multiplying by five, 10 times. Well, we multiplied by 10, five times. This is wrong because it should have been 10 and this is wrong because it should have been five. It's kind of mixed up there. So let's eliminate C. Multiplying by 10, yes. Did we do it five times? Yes. So ding, ding, ding. D is our answer. Awesome, go ahead and make any corrections that you need to make to your work. And then when you're ready, join me for number all right, let's go ahead and take a look at number two. Right away, let's knock out the question type here. We've got rows and we've got columns and our job is to match each row with the correct column. So this is a matching item question. I actually really like these types of questions, matching item, boom. Okay, let's take a look. It says match each expression and expression means that there is no what? equal sign right there's no equal sign with its correct value so these are the correct values so what we're gonna do is take each expression that's right there and match it with the correct value so let's start with the first column okay so I'm seeing that I have some numbers with I just got a little pen streak sorry about that um, I'm seeing that there are numbers with decimals and I've got powers of 10 here and I'm either multiplying or in this case down here I will actually be dividing it and um, we're gonna go ahead and knock that out but if you know that you need some more practice on multiplying and dividing by powers of 10 hang on until the end of the episode and I'm gonna show you where to go to get some more practice okay so here we've got 3.14 we don't read it like that we read it as 3 and 14 what hundredths tenths hundredths Awesome. So we're multiplying it by 10 to the power of zero. That means that we're shifting it to the right zero times, which means that we're not moving it at all, which means that it's actually like we're multiplying by one. If we aren't moving our decimal and we're just keeping it the same, it's actually like multiplying it by one times. So really three and 14 hundredths times one would be three and 14 hundredths, which would be choice what? Yeah, it would be this one right here. And if we match them up, zoop, it would be right there. Choice A, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. All right, here we've got, let me bring it down. 0 0.314, I just say it like that to help me write it down, but the correct way to read it would be, read it with me, 300, 14 what? Thousandths, very good. And we are multiplying it by 10 to the power of three, which means we are, because we're multiplying, we're going to shift our decimal to the right to make the value my day. And the exponent tells us how many times to shift it to the right. So let's go three times to the right. One, two, three. Out with the old in with the new and now we're going to rewrite so bring down my zero bring down my three bring down my one bring down my four bring down my decimal point hmm that looks kind of funny it actually would just be 314 because we don't need the zero there really there's a zero there but we don't need to write the zero and really there's the ninja decimal there hiya that's always there. It's always right behind the ones place, but we don't always have to write it. So this matches up 
with this value right here. So let's match it. Oop, that would be choice E. Moving on to the next one. I've got three, one point four. That's not how we read it. Let's read it properly. It would be 31 and four what? Tenths, that's right. And we're multiplying it by 10 to the power of two. So because we're multiplying it, we're gonna shift our decimal to the right to make the value my day. And the exponent tells us how many times to move it. So how many hops are we gonna make? Two, here's our decimal. One, two. Out with the old, in with the new, and ooh, we need to put something right there in that blank space. What should we put? A zero, very good. Now let's rewrite. Three, one, four, zero. Decimal, that looks kind of funny because that's supposed to be a ninja decimal if I don't have anything in the tenths, hundredths, or thousandths. So to rewrite that, I could make it 3,140. Do you see 3,140 as an answer choice? Yeah, right over here. So let's match it up. Match the row and the column. Boom, right there at I. Bubble it in. All right, and let's move on to the last one. Okay, I've got 314 times 100. Now I know this is multiplying, but because this is a fraction that's less than one, it actually makes my value less. This is just like saying divided by 100. Okay, which is also like saying divided by 10 to the power of two zero, so two. So because I'm actually dividing by 10 to the power of two or 100, I'm going to shift my decimal to the left to make the value less. So where is my decimal here? Oh yeah, hi, -ya! it's right there, two zeros or the power of two, so I'm gonna do two hops to the left. Do it with me, one, two, out with the old, in with the new, and now I'm going to rewrite 3.14, or three, oops, sorry, or three and 14 hundredths. Which choice does that match? J, K, or L? Yeah, J, it's right here. Shoop. So go ahead and mark J. And notice that this row and this row both share the same value when we match it. So that is how you do these two problems for today. But let me go ahead and send you in the right direction for some more practice. So first, I would like for you to go to my website, McCarthyMathAcademy.com and check out the McCarthy Math 155 series days 51 through 56. I'm gonna include the link for that. But you have to be signed in, which means that you have to be a member to see these videos. But I do go ahead and give you seven days for free, so please check out these free videos. And teachers, if you decide that you wanna become a member, you can actually share these videos with your students. I show you how to do that. Email me if you need some help. So McCarthy Math 155 has day 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, and 56. How many videos of practice is that? six awesome six videos of practice just for you where i break down what we just did here today okay by the end of those six video lessons you will be a pro at multiplying and dividing by powers of 10. another place that i'm going to send you is to the how to pass the math fsa series for this standard that we worked on today now i created this series a while ago back when the math fsa was a computerized test. It's not a computerized test anymore, so some of the questions, they look a little different than what you see in this current series, which is why I built the Math FSA Bootcamp, just to go with the look of the paper-based test. So check that out, it's still great practice for you. You can go there. Finally, I encourage you to follow me, that way you can stay in the know. Follow me on Instagram, at McCarthy Math Academy. Follow me on Facebook, at McCarthy Math Academy. And of course, I'm here on YouTube, at McCarthy Math Academy. If you found this video to be just a little bit helpful, hopefully it was a lot of it helpful, hopefully you just love coming to watch these videos, 
do me a favor and please tap that like button. It really does help me out to let me know that you guys are liking the content that I'm putting out there and it allows me to go ahead and create more episodes for you. Also, while you're at it, go ahead and click that subscribe button. That way you are the first to know when I drop a new video. And finally, before we go, I just want you to know that you were born for a purpose. That's right. You are the ones that we have been waiting for. So I want you to make sure that every day you are trying to find your light and then shine it bright. Watch out world because we have a whole new generation of world changers. That's you who are going to step it up and make this world a better place. When you have the choice, make sure that you choose kindness and I will see you all in the next video.